Right. Straight up the water. Yes. Mm. Right. Yes. In your watch, Mrs. Greenhorse, it's nowhere near opening time. Oh, Arthur, let's come in to keep you company a bit. I'll give you hand to get ready for him coming back. No uh, pay. I'll not say no. I've been talking to myself all afternoon. Well, I can't think of a better person to talk to. Do you know who I've been talking to? Minnie Caldwell's cat. Been meowing its head off on the doorstep all day. Fancy me talking to a cat. Then I went and turned telly on, and it was him singing from Halifax. Well, I reckon they'll not be home too late after opening time. If I know Annie, she'll not have them blowing in the last few quid in a strange pub back of beyond. <laughs> oh, I've laid a fresh barrel on. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll fetch me transistor, then we can have music while we're working. Eh? Right, right, but get your states on, though. They'll be rolling home any time. Right. Ooh, I wish I'd have gone with them. Stanley Ogden. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Uh, fattish. Well, not exactly fattish. M yeah, I suppose you could say fattish. Please, go back and sit down. He's got a round face. I wish I could help you. He's you... me husband. Where is he? Hello, Mrs. Oh, Ogden. I wonder if you could perhaps persuade him to sit down, Hilda. Yep. Um, funny. I'll try and find out from the office. Funny saying husband, isn't it? You know, I mean, the word husband itself, like, cos, well, it's Stan to me, really, isn't it? Husband's like something you read in the evening news. It's when you're talking to strangers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, come and sit down, Helen. Look, there's a seat over here. Got a nice piece of ham for when we get home, lovely and lean. <laughs> Jack likes a little cold ham with some pickles, though it does give him indigestion. <laughs> I asked Flora Linley to save some for me. Good gracious. Flora Linley? Why do I say that? Uh, how is, um, your husband? Jack? Oh, he'll have some excuse. You mark my words. Is he, um... Is he all right? Should never have gone looking for Lucille, not at night. Don't know where my husband is, neither. Asked her over there, but she wouldn't tell me. Blooming toffee nosed. I could report her, I could. Nurse. Uh, I can't wait here. We must get back for opening time. Where's Jack? Oh, they won't let you go, Mrs. Walker. Now, don't worry. I, I expect your husband's with my husband somewhere. You know what husbands are. Nurse! 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 Oh. She's fainted. Yes, nurse. She's fainted. Porter! Bring a wheelchair. What on earth were you thinking of, nurse, to keep this old lady sitting here? She should have been seen to immediately. She wouldn't let me, sister. Wouldn't let you? What do you mean, wouldn't let you? She insisted on being seen to last. Nurse, when will you learn not to let old ladies bully you? I'll take her up to W2 and put her to bed. I'll inform Dr. Aiken. Oh, sister. Yes? Uh, could I have some information? I've got a little girl in there, pulled a pan of boiling fat down on herself. I'm very busy. I'm an ignorant in these places. It's all right, Hilda. And Mrs. Walker. Jack's all right. And Stan. They're all right. Ah, Stan. Mr. Walker's in X-ray. And Mr. Ogden's in Ward M1. Oh, Stan. Tell you what, I'll go and find us a nice cup of tea from somewhere. Eh? Hmm? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Mrs. Ogden? Yes, Mrs. Walker. You and I, we've always been friends, really, haven't we, more than employer and employee? Yeah, that's right. 
I expect it'll be in cardboard cups. Are you are you feeling all right, Elsie? It's a bit chilly outside. Of course, I suppose we can expect it in November. It's warm in here, though, of course, with it being a hospital. Just a few details, that's oh, all. I'm looking for my wife. I know you're looking for your wife, Mr. Uh, Sergeant. But in the meantime... She was sitting beside her, she grabbed my arm. She, she grabbed my arm. Please, Sergeant, concentrate. Just a few details. And she said something to me. I, I don't know what she said. It was something about... With, with... Hello, love. Lizzie! Oh. Sergeant. There was the sound of something metallic hitting the road underneath the bus, uh, at the front end. Then the driver seemed to lose all control of the steering wheel. He spun round in his hands and then the coach took a sharp turn off the road. You're late. Late, Spud? Late for what? For college. I'll get up and make you some breakfast. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's evening, and we're dining out. You're hurt. So are you, love. Coach crash, remember? Coach? Mm, the mystery tour. The owner says he's going to arrange some more for us. It will have to brighten up the dull winter month. I must get the children some new shoes. Yes, love. Uncle Albert. He's in the mail ward with Jack and Stan. He's broken his arm again in the same place, muttering something about suing the hospital. You won't let me forget the shoes, love, will you? No, I won't, love. Come on now, Mrs. Sharples, let's get you ready for bed. Well, I'm ready. Just a nice little lie down, eh? Are you humouring me? No. Coaxing me, persuading me. If you like, Mrs. Sharples, for your own good, I know what's best for my own good, and I'm not getting into that bed until I've found out what happened to the rest of the folk with me in that shower. Well, for our good, then. Look, Mrs. Sharples, Sister Jones told me I wasn't to let you bully me, and I have to put you to bed. You don't know her. Well, you can go back and tell your Sister Jones that I'm not going. You'll cop it when the dragon comes breathing fire at you. Why don't you get into bed, Mrs. Sharples? You look all in. You don't know what it's like, do you? They used to paste the casualty list on the notice board outside the mission after the air raids. Hey, am I glad to see you lot. Sissy Ains from Tutbury Street. Her husband worked nights on the side in shunting. You come home to no wife and no house. Maggie's in the next ward. Oh, how is she? Well, they say she'll be all right, but you know they tell you anything. She's got a fractured pelvis and a head injury. She doesn't look very good to me. Oh, she'll be all right. Why do you keep looking? Hey, what's the matter? We just went on playing the music as if nothing had happened. Oh, what music? Oh, love. And then the fella said, just as if nothing had happened. Here, sit down. I'll get you a drink. Now, get that inside your gully. Take your time, Ro. Well, there was a news flash, and then this what fella said news just flash, as if... Love? About the coach. About the coach crash in the Lake District and a party from Weatherfield. It can't be, can it? Oh, God. Mm -hmm. 
the garden and this way. And the lake just beyond the defendant. Oh, sister, could I slip and use the OP phone? Only my mother was expecting me. Two minutes, nurse. Thank you, sister. Oh, and do explain to your young man when you phone that this is a hospital. We don't keep office hours. Where's the lady who was sitting here? Um, Mrs. Tanner. With the wrist. Oh, oh she went out. Out? Out where? Well, uh, just out. Oh, we just have to find out where she is, wouldn't we? I do hope it doesn't leave a scar. Yeah, yes, love. Hurts me to talk. Then don't. Don't want them. Don't worry, love. Oh, Jack, how can I help but worry? You're not going to be able to manage your lady vigil this evening, are you? No, Jack. Well, you, you won't, will you? Well, of course I will. Oh. And if you're thinking of your battalion reunion... I'm, I'm all right. Oh, I oh. oh love. Why are we arguing? <laughs> That awful smash. We could both... We could both have been killed. I all worse, love. Just one of us. I ate that last bottle of beer and a kick in it, didn't I? Oh, don't. Don't try and make me laugh, Stan. It hurts. Sorry, mate. Looks like most of us have to spend the night here. Observation. Recovery from shock. No, no, thanks. Most of us, Mr Turpin. What? Does that mean some of us are missing? Well, let's say one or two are as yet unaccounted for. Is there no rather. chance of letting my brother know we're all right? Well, Ken, Ken Barlow's tried to phone the rovers from time to time, but he's always engaged. But uh, don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll contact the station if it's engaged next time. Who's missing, do you know? I can't tell you, Mrs Walker. Can't or won't? No, can't. I'm only a patient like you. I did hear there's some concern over Elsie Tanner. Uh. They say she's just vanished into thin air. Sure. The naming thing. Hello? Oh, Dennis. No, it's Doc. Doc Greenalge. No, I've not been watching telly. I've just been trying to get your mother's fire going. I've got smuts all over the new decorations. Decorations? She's had all the place done up. You wouldn't know it looks like a new house. What, love? No, she hasn't phoned. Of course I will. I'll let you know as soon as she does, I promise. The what? The court? I will. Let's worry about that when it happens, eh? All right, love. Yes, I will. Bye. Up. Why are you only interested in bad news? No, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Like every hospital in this country, Mrs. Sharples, we're understaffed and overworked. And it doesn't help us very much having a cantankerous old lady who refuses to get into bed. Now, see that you stay there. And keep your eyes on her, nurse, if it isn't too much trouble. Don't worry, Mrs. Sharples. We'll have you right as ninepence in no time. How are you feeling? Oh, not very well. A bit faint. As soon as I close my eyes, I can feel the bed going fast down the road and about to crash any minute. Oh, good night, sleeper, Philip. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. I'm just worried sick about the kids. Ken keeps trying to get through to the Rovers, but it's engaged all the time. How do you like it? It's an E side. One hand and automatic gear change. Oh. Took a pair of crutches in part exchange. Oh, Rocky, I'm so glad to see you. Don't know. There's no petrol consumption, just a few corridors on the clock. How are you, darling? Fine. Honest. I don't know why they've got me in bed. We'll go away for Christmas. An holiday. Dickie, it's miles off. Well, they got Father Christmas in the shops already. 
We'll talk about it later. Tell you what, get him to bring me one of these wheelchairs, will you? Uh, you wouldn't like it if you were in one permanent. Wouldn't I? Try me. It's an easy man's life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no Early Jane Peters. Who, oh, Mrs. Sharples? Oh, you, you know who, that woman. That woman, her daughter was killed when the viaduct fell. Oh. Pycamp. Mrs. Sharples. Pycamp, many cold up, going off like that, because I tackled her about getting into debt with David. Minnie. Where's Minnie? How did you get back, Lil? I don't know. Perhaps you thumbed a lift. Maybe. Well, you didn't fly back because your broomstick's not parked All right, outside. So I got a lift. Hey, love, don't shout at me. I was only trying to cheer you up. Have a drink of tea. It, it was all them uniforms. Come again. All them uniforms. Go here. Do this, do that. No smoking. It was like being in, in prison. It was hospital, love, and you should have stayed. It was like being in prison, I said. And they would have kept me. So I got out. I've got some zinc ointment for your wrist. It's all we've got. There is a bit of cold cream. I, I don't want to go to prison. You won't go to prison, How do you said. know? Well, if the worst comes to the worst in the court, they'll let you off. You see, they will help. Cyril Turpin was there, was talking to that inspector. They were talking about me. I know they were talking about me. I don't want to go to, to prison. You haven't touched your tea, have you? You know, if we'd gone to Australia last year, this would never have happened. Oh, well, I could have done, Chuck. Oh, yeah, I know, but, I mean, we wouldn't have been on it, would we? Well, the ship could have sunk. Oh, they don't, Stan. Not often. There's volcanoes, you know. Our oh, Irma never mentioned them. Well, when she wouldn't, would she fear upsetting us? No, you're right, Chuck. Mm. Oh, she'd have been upset today, though. Ah. Mm. Do you know, I thought of her just as the shadow were going off, off the road. Ah, oh, it's the sort of things, you know, we, we don't understand. No. We're not given, that's why. Oh, you take it this way. We got on that ship and it had sunk. We wouldn't have seen our Irma again or our grandchild. Well, we've come out of this. It's a sort of second chance, you know, uh, fate. Huh? Yeah, I expect you're right, love. Uh. Fate. Mm. What are you smiling <laughs> at? Oh, isn't it funny, the daft things you think of? Do you know what my first thought were when I come to? No, what? What a good job it was you changed your underpants this morning. <laughs> Oh, Jack, love, please don't try to make a martyr of yourself. Just rest and get better, that's all. Oh, How love. can I rest? What, we are through on the pub and... Well, Ken's gone to see if he can get through again. Well, but tomorrow is... Jack, <coughs> there mightn't have been a tomorrow. No, look, he's still engaged. That, that does it. That Jack, does it. Look, Jack! Oh, no, just, just hang on a sec, will you, Mr Walker? Just hang on. Police messages? Hmm? Police messages? No, just a spot of good music. Finest, tranquil eyes that there is. Engaged. Ah, right. Well, I'll contact the station. That's one of the reasons they put uh, petrol in panda cars. What are you doing out of bed? Oh, and come along, ladies. This isn't the Adelphi. Where are you going? Uh, to phone the station. And what station might that be? I'm a police sergeant, staff. And I happen to be in charge of this ward, Sergeant. Uh, look, we haven't managed to get in touch with anybody at home yet. I've got two small children and some of these people I'll here. allow you five minutes, Sergeant. Oh, thank you. Uh, staff? Yes? There are one or two names not been mentioned. One or two faces not been seen. Can you tell me anything? Go and make your telephone call, Sergeant. Stories from them as didn't go and why they didn't go, yes. is that it? Human interest, the offbeat feature, something like that. Well, there it is. The street. They all went.
Why do hospitals always close the windows at night and then turn the central heating off? It's stifling. Yeah, my sheets are tucked in so tight I've got pins and needles in my feet. Oh, well. I suppose we're very lucky when all's said and done. Do you know, I'd, I'd hate to be at Lake Windermere now. In the dark, no light anywhere. Oh, it'd be cold. Hey, I bet that temple thing's spooky. Can you imagine it all done? Oh, shut up, Audrey. Think nice thoughts. Sure, always my dad's favourite. How were my mum's? <laughs> she got tuppens for fetching his tobacco. I got nothing. Cos she shared. Miss Maggie? Oh, no. No, but she... Oh, she's not very well. She's just lying there. She bought that little shop, you know, to settle down in with, with everything she'd saved. The husband and the son. Oh, now she's got nothing. Except me and Cyril. It isn't the same. Oh, poor Maggie. <sighs> she's just lying there. I don't think she's bothered. One thing. Cyril's managed to, to wangle us a lift back very early in the morning so that I can, I can go and open up the shop and see if the rovers are all right. Are hey, you deaf, you lot? I said, are you deaf? I've been asking you a question. You've all ignored me. I'm sorry, Mr. Sharp. I didn't hear you. I asked where Minnie Colwell was. I don't know. Doesn't anybody know? Perhaps some of the ward, Mrs. Sharp, was. Don't know. Perhaps. Has nobody taken the trouble to find out? Oh, it is cold out. Is it? Nice drop of brandy I've brought for you to do you good. And I'm going to have a drop to do me good because I went out to fetch it. I'll give you that, Greg. Greg? No, love, I bought it for you to do you good. Doesn't get drunk, you know. You've got to be at work for now tomorrow. Oh, no, not tomorrow, love. Funny, the deaf things you remember. Elsie, would you like a couple of aspirins? Just after the crash. I can't remember whether I was upside down or not. I remember seeing Minnie Cole was at the one I sold her. Going bumpity bump down the hill. All by itself. Bumpity bumpity. Please, come back Leave to me you. alone. I'm all right, thank you. Mrs. Sharp, but you mustn't wonder about it. I want to go in there. You have to find out where we live. What is Mrs. Sharples doing out of bed? Get her back immediately and yourself. Really, Mrs. Sharples. Please, Mrs. She's Sharples. in there. I know she is. Shh, I know. Shh. Mrs. Caldwell, you can't see her. I'm sorry. Mrs. Caldwell is very poorly. 